Okay, I hear you guys. I'm not going to make a cover with the Lexan. I'll just slap the old black one on there. It'll look good. At some point, I would like to learn how to bend this stuff, though, properly. I've got some other projects in the future that I might want to use it on. So I might uh, read up on bending this stuff and maybe make a jig or something like that. Maybe a heat bed for bending it. So anyway, onward with the controller. Forget about the case. So no, I didn't get the wire yet for my stepper motors, and I need to do that so I can test the machine. I was looking at uh, Dave's recommendation here. This is Hobby CNC's documentation for the board. And he's saying 22 gauge stranded should be fine for most applications. It's his board. And in this case, this is his stepper. So I'm going to go with what Dave says here and go 22 stranded or better with at least uh, six conductors. Here's what it looks like in the jacket as eight wires so I still have enough room these are those connectors you guys sent me out to buy so anyway I need to buy the wire I think I'm gonna go ahead and temporarily just hook one of these up and at least I can plug the controller in and test it right we haven't even hooked it to the computer so geez we gotta do that so the question is is how do you wire this up you have to get your documentation for your motor. This is the Hobby CNC motor. It's a 305, and here is the paperwork for it. The 305, it also includes these two models. It tells me the color of the wire and then its connection. So there's two commons here, and they have four wires that go to those two commons. I can tell you that this common is an actual physical connection on the board so this is this essentially so if you were to bundle all four of these wires it would be fine but uh, they break them up like that hand puppets they break them up like that to uh, carry the current <clears throat> so you just follow along it's that simple This is the computer connection to the parallel port. First time on the parallel port since it was put in a new case. I'm setting my voltage references and that's the maximum current allowed for each of the axes. And it depends on what your motor allowance is to know what to set these to. Because the project's almost all done and I know what motors I'll be putting on X, Y, and Z, I can kind of set these. The way that you do it is there are three trim pots, one, two, and three, X, Y, and Z, and they're labeled. You turn those to change the maximum current that each of the three can deliver. And this is a three amp max stepper motor in my case. And it's suggested for a 3 amp maximum to, to uh, set the voltage to 0 0.42 volts DC. What voltage? Well, if you look beside the trim pot, there's a pad also, X, Y, and Z. You take your negative to your negative rail here, and then you test the pads. 0.20. So we're set way low. So what we have to do. Just turn that screw till we get .42 volts. And let me turn on the spindle. Bam! So yeah, I have a light bulb plugged in there, but it works. I'm just clicking a little button on my computer that says spindle, and the plug is activating. More about this in future videos. I'm just testing. Well, yeah, it works. And, um, great. I'm happy. 
the relays are working all the motor outputs are working it sounds healthy it's not getting hot so we can proceed and I can continue on and uh, make it a permanent installation don't worry I'm gonna go over all the Mach 3 stuff in a separate video once I'm sure that my equipment's working properly and I'll show you the gritty details I know there's been a few of you and so thanks for your patience anyway that's it for today we'll see you on the next one we'll do some more don't forget to uh, thumbs up and bye for now